We're going to move on to topic number six, and that's the NFL season being done and finished during the era of COVID. And, you know, they got through the whole year, played the Super Bowl, got that done, and, and now we're, we're heading into the offseason, and they got, it, they got it all done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible that they were able to get this finished. You know, each professional sports league in America has had its own set of challenges when it comes to the pandemic. You know, the first league that got hit the hardest was the NBA then they were very smart and figured out the bubble. And then once they had the bubble, they weren't going to have any issues. Nobody got COVID, you know, because of their planning, but also because of the way it was set up, they weren't going to see a lot of COVID issues. They saw none, you know, other than guys, Lou Williams, we'll leave that for another day. Um, but for the most part, the system worked, right? And then you have baseball, who was really the first league that had games outside of a bubble, but because baseball is outdoors, one, it's a little safer. And two, guys aren't right on top of each other. Guys aren't engaging each other at the line of scrimmage like they are in football. And you have just less players. You have more than basketball, but you still have less than football. It's about half the size of the roster. So I think football, you know, really had maybe the toughest challenge at that point in the pandemic to figure out what to do with their season. And you know, there were times when things didn't look pretty. I mean, I think I honestly think COVID kind of screwed up the Patriots a little bit. They were playing really well. Cam Newton got COVID. Stephon Gilmore uh, got COVID as well. And then, you know, all hell kind of broke loose with the Pats. And their, their season was kind of never the same. Um, you saw what happened with the Denver Broncos where they didn't have any quarterbacks out of a receiver play quarterback late in the year. Luckily, the Broncos were completely out of playoff contention and it didn't really affect you know, playoff seating or who made the playoffs or that sort of thing. But other than that, they got through it. Somehow, you know, with all this traveling, you know, the, the NFL, you know, had these these different uh, protocols where, you know, some guys would be on one plane, some guys would be on another, guys would be on one bus and other guys would be on another. They had contact tracing. If people saw hard knocks, they would see all the bracelets and all the different um, – you know, uh, gadgets that they were trying to use to do this stuff. And they actually did a pretty good job with it, considering the amount of players and the amount of time uh, that players on the field are engaged in front of each other, uh, where you could see, you know, physical contact. So I thought the NFL did a really great job. It was something that none of these sports leagues have had to deal with before. Yeah, like you said, nobody's had to deal with this before. Everything was kind of being learned on the fly. And I do, I do think they did a great job of getting through the whole season. And I think they, they kind of decided that, hey, we're just not going to take a break and we're not going to cancel any games. And obviously it's money talks and it's all about that money and those TV contracts. And so they knew that, hey, we're not going to cancel any games. We're going to get the TV contracts. But that's when you have situations where, like in Denver, where they had no quarterbacks that could play, but the game was still going to go on. Um, and by the way, I think that wide receiver did a great job coming in and, and playing. <laughs> Um, and playing backup quarterback, and especially in the NFL. But, I mean, I think you did see a lot of situations like that where you had positional groups that were out because of contact tracing, but the game just still went on. I think uh, the Ravens had no running backs one game. Um, so it was just, you know, they set the tone that we're, we're not going to cancel any games. We're going to play through this. We're going to get through this. We need the money. I know the owners were complaining about it. Um, and, and because they're not going to get any fans, so they're not going to get the ticket revenue. So they needed the contract of the TV revenue to bring to bring in any kind of money to help their franchises. So I really I really wasn't shocked. I am shocked, though, that they didn't cancel or postpone a game. I think that is really one of the bigger stories. They, they just got through the whole season and just kept going and kept going, got through the Super Bowl here. And like you said, they made sure that they were using certain protocols to make sure that they could get through the season. And even, even Kansas City was doing that going up into the Super Bowl week where they took two different planes down, one for just players and then staff and other personnel on a different plane. And I, I think, you know, they talked about this at the beginning of the pandemic where could the NFL do a, a bubble? And obviously the NFL came out and a lot of the NFL players came out and just said that's just impossible because yeah, it's too many guys. Yeah. yeah, just too many people. Just too many people. You have over a hundred people, and I'm talking not just players. We're talking about coaches. We're talking about trainers. We're talking about personnel. We're talking about equipment managers. There's a lot of people that go into this. You, you know, you got travel liaisons that travel with these guys. You've got security that travels. So it, it's it's a lot of people that you would have had to have put into a bubble per se. 
And I think even if they tried doing it at the Worldwide of Sports um, at Disney, I don't think that would have been successful. I don't think the players would have liked being there. They would have had to be there for months, unlike the NBA bubble where it was only about a month or six weeks tops. Um, so, but yeah, I, I mean, cheers to the NFL. I think we all needed to be watching some NFL games during these times. So I'm glad they did get through the season and I'm looking forward to next season. Yeah, I think one of the things that we got to remember too, on the business side of it, obviously public health is number one, but on the business side of it, you're looking at the NBA right now in the NHL. They're now, you know, the, the NFL was sort of criticized for like, we're just going to power through this, right? We're, we're going to post, we're going to put games on Tuesday nights, or I think they had a game on a Wednesday night at one point, had to move bye weeks around. And, you know, the Steelers were kind of like saying we never really had a bye week, and which is kind of true. But the, the NFL powered through it. They got kind of criticized, but now you're seeing the NBA and the NHL kind of power through it as well. Now, the NFL has the luxury of having one game a week because that's how the sport is built. So you have some some days in between to kind of reshuffle the schedule a little bit where it's more of a hassle for the NBA or the NHL. But the reason that the NBA and the NHL are doing it now is because this season is going to be kind of wacky, but they want to make sure that the following season, the 21-22 season, is on schedule because that's when they want to be able to open up the arenas again and start making money again. And you're seeing those teams now adapt the, the way that the NFL did it to get through this season. I think now we're seeing these sports leagues are just trying to get through these seasons. They know that at some point there's going to be players that are exposed. It's just, it's just you know, naturally going to happen. You know, luckily, a lot of these players are in tremendous physical condition. You know, hopefully they're staying away from family as much as possible, extended family, um, and staying away from senior citizens and so forth. Um, you know, certainly what happened to Carl Anthony Towns, his, his family is terrible. And uh, I know there's some other uh, athletes that have had some family uh, lose lose life in their families as well, which is awful. But, you know, these, these leagues have to power through it if they want the following season to go on as scheduled. So I think a lot of teams are adapting, a lot of leagues are adapting what the NFL did.